Brace yourselves, because what I'm about to tell you will blow your mind. Credit Suisse, one of the world's largest banks, is in deep trouble. Just days after the collapse of two U.S. banks, Credit Suisse is facing a magnitude of the disaster that is hard to fathom. Since its peak 16 years ago in 2007, Credit Suisse has lost a staggering 99% of its share price. I mean, we're talking about a bank that once held a whopping 1.3 trillion Swiss francs in deposits. And let's not forget that Credit Suisse was not some small, obscure bank. It was the second largest Swiss bank, right after UBS. So what caused Credit Suisse's downfall? Where did their economics go wrong? And how will this affect the global economy? These are important questions that we need answers to, especially with the current banking crisis that's affecting not just one, but two continents around the world. But first, stay up to date on the latest economic insights and analysis by subscribing to our channel. Join our community of savvy investors and business enthusiasts who never miss a beat in the ever-changing world of finance. Let's start. Once a trillion dollar company, Credit Suisse is now teetering on the edge of bankruptcy. But what exactly went wrong? It all boils down to the four streams of revenue that make up the bank. Wealth management, Swiss retail banking, investment banking, and asset management. These divisions were all doing incredibly well, generating billions of dollars in profits each year, but there was a dark side lurking beneath the surface. Credit Suisse was embroiled in scandal after scandal, from money laundering to helping Americans evade taxes to corporate espionage. In 2014, the bank was slapped with a massive $2.6 billion fine and admitted to helping U.S. citizens evade taxes over several decades. This was followed by another significant settlement in 2017, where the bank paid over $5 billion to settle with U.S. authorities over allegations that it misled investors in residential mortgage-backed securities sold before the 2008 financial crisis. In 2019, the bank was hit by a corporate espionage scandal that saw several executives implicated in ordering private detectives to track two outgoing executives. As a result, the bank faced regulatory investigations and its then-CEO, Mr. Thiam, stepped down from his position in 2020. And despite being fined billions of dollars, the bank remained profitable and trusted by its customers. However, Credit Suisse's luck ran out when it got involved with two high-profile disasters, Greensill Capital and Archegos. The collapse of Greensill and the ensuing fallout caused one hedge fund to short Credit Suisse, resulting in huge losses. And then came Archegos, which dealt Credit Suisse a staggering $5 billion in losses, the largest hit among all the banks involved. To put it straight, it all started with a risky exposure to the U.S. hedge fund Archegos Capital Management, leading to a whopping $5.5 billion loss in 2021. But that was just the beginning of their woes. As a major backer of Greensill Capital, Credit Suisse sold bonds to their high net worth clients, touting them as nearly risk-free. But in 2021, Greensill collapsed, forcing Credit Suisse to suspend $10 billion of investor funds. This left the rich depositors frustrated, causing a massive outflow of almost 100 billion Swiss francs in just the last quarter of 2022. To make matters worse, rumors of the bank shutting down added fuel to the fire. As a result, Credit Suisse reported negative net income in every quarter of 2022, with a pre-tax loss of 3.3 billion Swiss francs, a five-fold increase from the previous year. And just when everyone thought things couldn't get worse, the failure of several U.S. banks, including Silicon Valley Bank, shook the market and sent panic waves across Credit Suisse's depositors and investors. Their stock price fell to just 1.8 Swiss francs, a 74% decrease from the previous year. To add insult to injury, their credit default swaps skyrocketed in value. This shattered the public confidence in the bank, and fewer and fewer people wanted to do business. The bank then appointed a new CEO by the name of Ulrich Kerner in July 2022 to make sure that more people don't go away. He then unveiled a new strategic plan, but failed to win over more investors. The plan was to raise the capital with gross proceeds of 4 billion Swiss francs, but this further spooked the investors. Overall, their shares went tumbling, and they were in for the biggest crunch, things weren't looking well. And at this backdrop, last week their biggest shareholder, the chairman of Saudi National Bank, 
announced not to buy any more shares. This caused an extreme amount of panic, and that too with the news of the fall of Silicon Valley Bank. Thus, the shares of Credit Suisse plugged to around 25% in one single day. We would like you to subscribe to the channel if you are loving the content. Now, on the 16th of March, 2023, the group announced that it is taking decisive action to strengthen its liquidity by exercising its option to borrow from the Swiss National Bank up to 50 billion Swiss francs. This might sound good, but the reality is that Credit Suisse has now merged with UBS. This merger will see UBS buy Credit Suisse for $3.2 billion, which is a worry for the bondholders. This acquisition of Credit Suisse by its rival UBS has caused turmoil in the financial sector. Investors are scrambling to understand what it means for the market. But one thing is clear, Credit Suisse's decision to write off a large chunk of its additional Tier 1 bonds is causing anger and concern. AT1 bonds are a type of cocoa bond designed to hedge against future financial crises. They behave like bonds that offer high yields in good times, but when things don't go well, they switch to banks or write them down, reducing the bank's expenses and absorbing losses. AT1 bondholders are supposed to outperform stockholders in the order of first payers, but the Credit Suisse listing shows that stockholders are getting paid before AT1 bondholders. This worried investors who thought they were buying a mix of securities between equity and debt. This could spell trouble for the AT1 bond market, and some are even saying it could be the end of the asset class. This is bad news for banks which need investment. But now the biggest question is, whether will it lead to a big banking crisis, as after the Silicon Valley Bank, Credit Suisse is in trouble. Many experts think that this is not the case. Michael Berry has come on Twitter saying that the crisis will end sooner as he is not seeing any big danger. Steve Eisman asserted that he doesn't see another global financial contagion like in 2008. He said in a CNBC show, my partners and I think that large U.S. banks are better to capitalize on than the Swiss banks. And when you analyze the statement further, you come to realize that he's right. The banks in America may be facing challenges in terms of interest rates, but they don't have large systematic issues. Secondly, central banks across the globe might be seeing these developments really quickly. If a crisis emerges, they will come to the forefront and would try to bail out to avoid a bigger crisis. Another example can be taken from the response of recent banks. The Bank of Canada, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, and the European Union all have pledged to work in coordination to avoid any economic recession. There is no denying the fact that one of the world's biggest banks is on its knees, and no one except its own negligence is responsible for this mess. The merger of Credit Suisse with UBS has also been seen as a worrying sign for bondholders. Though there's so much hype about the subject, the reality is that there are limited chances of a global crisis. American banks are more capitalized and global central banks are better equipped than in 2008 to counter any shocks. Let's see what the future holds for Credit Suisse. If you like our content, do subscribe to the channel for more updates and do let me know your thoughts on this banking crisis.